This study was conducted with the COVID-19 and cancer consortium. And um, there have been a lot of data, um, small retrospective studies um, discussing or evaluating um, the influence of immunotherapy on the outcomes of patients with cancer um, that develop COVID-19. And um, looking at um, the, the biology of COVID-19, it has been associated sometimes uh, with the multi-inflammatory syndrome, so an overactivation of the immune system itself. Also in parallel, COVID-19 um, has been shown to be associated sometimes with a state of immunosuppression um, that would be technically associated with worse outcomes. So regarding the, um, the complex biology of COVID-19 and looking specifically at patients with cancer who represent one very vulnerable population in relation to COVID-19 as compared to the general healthy population and two, who receive frequently immunotherapy as part of their treatment regimen, we thought to evaluate the clinical outcomes of patients with cancer and COVID-19 in relation to immunotherapy as an exposure, but also immunosuppression. And we tried to look what's the true influence of immunotherapy and immunosuppression on the outcomes of patients with cancer and COVID-19. So we used data from the COVID-19 and Cancer Consortium of which I am part of and our team at Enfor is part of and um, we led a, pro a project where we evaluated um, uh, how, how does immune suppression and therapy interact with clinical outcomes. The primary endpoint was COVID-19 severity. However, in relation to the inflammatory syndrome that is usually seen in patients with COVID-19, um, not to very frequent degree, but reported at least in the literature, we also de de defined a secondary endpoint, being a cytokine storm. And we defined it based on a set of both biological and clinical parameters to um, encompass the overall picture of a true cytokine storm which should be technically related to an overactivation of the immune system. And so these were our two um, uh, endpoints. Now we controlled for a um, large set of clinical and demographic parameters, including vaccination status, all demographic parameters, um, uh, previous therapies received, and our two exposures of interest were recent anti-cancer ther systemic therapies, that's one, further stratified into IO or immunotherapy-based or non-IO um, systemic therapies and immunosuppression status. So we define immunosuppression at baseline, meaning before COVID-19. And to account for a potential interaction between the two exposures, being immunosuppression and immunotherapy, um, we included the interaction term between them in the multivariate analysis that we conducted. So what we found is for both endpoints, COVID-19 severity and the instance of cytokine storm, we found um, a significant interaction term, meaning that we would have to stratify by immunosuppression status to appreciate the true influence of immunosuppression and immunotherapy in relation to co uh, the outcomes of patient cancer and COVID-19. And what we saw overall, the final results, are that in the subgroup of patients who have baseline immunosuppression, the recent administration before COVID-19 of IO anti-cancer therapy, so immuno immunotherapy, uh, and non-IO systemic anti-cancer therapy was associated with worse outcomes as compared to patients with cancer and immunosuppression who developed COVID-19 but did not receive any recent systemic therapy. However, in patients with cancer and COVID-19 who did not have immunosuppression, the recent administration of any kind of systemic anti-cancer therapy was not associated with lower outcomes as compared to untreated patients. Meaning that you have to combine two conditions in order to um, relate to worse outcomes among patients with cancer and COVID-19. These two conditions being baseline immunosuppression and the recent receipt of systemic anti-cancer therapies. And so this would help achieve a, a clarification for the entire field because there have been so far 
uh, many conflicting data. So some studies would infer uh, worse outcomes in relation to end therapy. Other studies would refer to the non-difference in outcomes, so a non-influence of immunotherapy in relation to clinical outcomes. So our study helps to better define the specific subgroups of patients with cancer and using a very large um, data set of 12,000 patients uh, with cancer and COVID-19 and comparing time periods from March 2020 to May 2022, meaning that we cover all the different phases of the pandemic and accounting for a very comprehensive set of both demographic and clinical variable. This helps to better define the specific subgroups of patients with cancer and COVID-19 who might be very vulnerable to worse outcomes.